Happy Sunday. I, uh, as always, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm not sure what you're going to get today. I'm just going to talk, I think. I have a lot of thoughts going through my mind about the scripture. I have a lot of things that, uh, yeah, well, just life in general on how the scripture speaks to me, but most of all, how the presence of God is with me and always with me. So let's uh, begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, you are more close to our minds than you are to our thoughts. You're more close to our hearts than you are to our feelings. I think it's because you know, those thoughts and those feelings just kind of rattle with all the stuff that we have in everyday life. But right now, help us to realize that when we center with you, when we seek your presence, that somehow all that other stuff aligns in a way that becomes more manageable for sure, but we really get where we know what's important and what's not important, and we learn how to live and not just survive. So Lord, I pray today somehow we move out of survival into life. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. The gospel for today comes to us from John chapter 15. Jesus said, I am the true life and my father is a vine grower. It removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whatever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, or my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. What's your light week been like? Did every person that crossed your path just be an ultimate joy? Was it just wonderful at every turn? You know, with the encounters that you had every day? I can't say mine always was. Uh, you know, I had people who had needs. I had people who had wants. I had people who, uh, you know, could help me. People who weren't so helpful in my life. Things that got in the way, things that uh, went smoothly. It was an up and a down, but isn't that what life really is? I was taken aback a few days ago when I got a phone call from somebody. The person, actually, I had done sort of, we weren't directly connected, but we had enough connection on a project that we're working together on. And uh, to be upfront with you, it was the conversation started where that person just let go of their frustrations on me. As I listened to it, I just sat there. Some of it, you know, was not real fun to hear. Uh, but I, I took it all in and listened and listened a little bit more and then listened to a little bit more. If you want the truth, I got new empathy for actually a customer rep from like Express Scripts or something like that. Because it, it was firing upon me, but it wasn't really about me. At one point, that person said to me, you know, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm letting go of all my frustrations on you. And my response was, look, after the business I've been in for 40 some years, I said, I don't take a whole lot too personally, but I listen to what I can change and do that. The stuff I can't have, do anything about, I'll probably tell you. And I can't do anything about that. You gotta go to somebody else, not me. I was taken aback by it because when I thought about the frustrations afterwards, what I recognized more than anything else is that behind every frustration, I believe, there is some sort of a judgment that goes on. Maybe it's a blame, maybe it's a, you know, a shame, maybe it's uh, 
something else, but there's sort of a judgment call that takes place. And that frustration doesn't just happen because, well, it's a frustrating circumstance. You pass a judgment on it because somehow it gets in your way one way or the other. I mean, even frustrations with yourself, it's a judgment upon yourself. I mean, think about it. You're saying, why can't I do this? I mean, how many of you have ever woken up and gone and looked in the mirror and said, why won't my hair cooperate? It's kind of funny, but it's so seriously true. It's that grievance, those things that we have in there that frustrate us, that get in the way of what we want, what we think should go on. Eckhart Tolle, the author, once said this. He said, guilt, resentment, regret, grievances, sadness, bitterness, and I think he named a couple other. He goes, what they basically do, and I wrote it down, it says this, and all forms of unforgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. I thought that was a powerful statement. Too much past and not enough presence. In the gospel that we have today, Jesus says real clearly an analogy, you know, uh, my, my father is the vine dresser and I'm the vine, you are the branches and you got to bear fruit, you know, and if you don't bear fruit, well, then you're you know, going to be broken off. You're going to be thrown into a fire. If, if you do bear fruit, well, just know this, it's not going to be that easy because you're going to get pruned, but you'll bear more fruit when you're pruned. And so that God, the vine dresser, is totally involved through me to you, a branch. And he's going to be working with you. He's going to be there for you. And he's going to prune you, which isn't always what I would call, you know, uncomfortable or it, it hurts sometimes but nonetheless you'll bear more and more fruit i started playing with that analogy in my own head and i thought to myself you know really kind of interesting analogy i'm not the vine so i'm not the center of the world but i am a branch off of the vine what kind of branch do i want to be i do want to be one that bears fruit i hope you want to be one that bears fruit and so that means you know i open myself up for pruning but I also want to be a branch that in bearing fruit serves a purpose that, well, that isn't just sort of not involved. I want to be involved in it. I thought to myself, you know the kind of branch I really want to be? I want to be the branch that a kid will climb up the vine to get to, to sit up there. And he'll sit upon the branch that I am in some way, shape, or form and maybe carve his initials into me, which probably would hurt a little bit. But nonetheless, even though they may leave a mark on me, they know that their life has somehow gotten better because I existed. I made a difference. You know, I remember when I was a little kid, we grew up in a town called Island, New Jersey. Uh, it was very undeveloped uh, all around, and especially in the Edison Township area that was just down the street. I mean, you had to walk by maybe eight houses and you were in this big woods area, which by the way, we called the woods. And I, I'd go in there. There were two trees that I used to always go and hang out in. And they were both truly oak trees, one we called Fort Apache, named after the fort that was in, not the movie that happened before I was born, but named after the fort that was in Rin Tin Tin, the TV show about a German shepherd. But the other one we called that other large, and it was an oak tree, we didn't know any better, we called it the Big Maple, uh, because we thought it was a maple tree. But I used to climb those trees. In fact, my mother would always say that, you know, she couldn't find me. She'd go down to the woods and look up in the air because somehow I was up at the highest point I could possibly get in a tree. I did it because there was a piece that was up there that 
I didn't find in other places. I could see further than I could see. I could dream more than I could dream. I had to work to get there. And a lot of times it was really dangerous because I was going on some really thin branches. But being up there, I could look out on those branches. And I had a sense of presence about me and about, well, the power that I trusted, I think, at that point, whatever I named it. Jesus says very clearly, abide in me as I abide in you. But you abide in the presence. And what keeps us from the presence? <laughs> what keeps us from the presence, I think, are all those forms of unforgiveness, all those things like frustration, because you can't say that you've forgiven everybody if you're frustrated all the time. That's a fact. And you have to admit that somewhere along the line, if you're frustrated with yourself, then you haven't really sort of accepted yourself where you're at it. The things you can change and the things you can't change. And knowing that the only things you can change are the things that are in you that you can change, not the things you can't. You know, a lot of us would want to be, you know, sort of the smartest person in the room. And, and to be upfront with you, when I get into a, a group of people and some of them are people that think that they're the smartest guy in the room, I tend to not like that too much. And I, I hope I'm not that. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. But I want to be the kindest person in the room. I want the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, kindness, forbearance, self-control. I want those things to come out of me. Because that's the way that other people will climb the vine of Jesus Christ and get to my branch and find the presence, the presence of the living God. Hope you have a great week this week. I really do. And I'll be up front with you. I will be praying specifically for you. But please pray specifically for me. Because it's in that prayer that the presence of God becomes real. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.